And we combined them again with some transition methods, and we did, or we resulted, in a different composition when the alkaline earth metals became bigger. This a similar type of complexes that we have discussed before, such acetato compounds or nitrato compounds, uh, in the same way with two ligands, we just obtained with calcium. We obtained with calcium, but this was also the reason that we made this reaction, since uh, in photosystems of green plants, there are some metal centers that have two, not copper, but manganese atoms, approximately 13 atoms apart from each other, and in the center is a calcium atom, and we have some physics who are interested in studying the interactions between these manganese atoms, and they felt this could be a good model to make the manganese compound with calcium and to study how the magnetic interactions work even when our metals, uh, metal ions are closer to each other than in the natural system. But finally, <clears throat> we failed with the isolation of crystal structures. Uh, we could just crystallize the copper compound. The manganese can be prepared, but it is an amorphous uh, powder. But the physics nevertheless have it in their fingers and study it now. But this is structurally the exception. This bi-ligand coordination is the exception in this group of compounds. Since with alkaline earth and alkaline metals, we observed a different type of coordination. Since now we combined two, two plus transition metal ions with one two plus extra metal ion. And so a charge compensation can be formed by a sum formula of two of the transition metals, one of the alkaline earth metals, and three of the ligands. And exactly this happens. You cannot see it so good in this structure. That's why I have, I have prepared it in a, a different way and colored the three ligands in a different shape. You have one axis and three ligands around this axis. This works with also with other metal ions, with barium, but also with alkaline ions, then a counter ion is uh, coordinated. We can isolate such compounds with potassium and rubidium as well. In this way, we could prepare with very simple metal ions, different compounds, and we had to consider that the size of the central ions gives an opportunity to control the structure. Now, let me go to another type of combination. We went from the f this series of metals, which are equatorial planar metal ions, to more tetrahedral metal ions. With a tetrahedral coordination in this outer sphere, we will necessarily disturb the coordination, and it should be not possible or not so easily possible to make such dry nuclear compounds since we bend the ligands. So the second coordination of the outer sphere metal should not be possible. So we made a reaction with mercury and the lanthanide series. And indeed it happens what I mentioned. We do not end with the dry nuclear compounds, but we end with tetranuclear, sometimes in pentanuclear compounds, since these mercury atoms now are no more able to, co to be combined with one lanthanide in the center. The reaction conditions were very similar to those of the 
uh, lanthanide ions with manganese, copper, and nickel, but the results, the structure, are different. And the only difference that we introduced into the system was the preference of mercury for a tetrahedral in favor to a planar coordination. And depending on the salt that we use, we finally end with different structures. We have in the case, when, when we use the chloride here, it, at the mercury atoms, chloride ligands that are not innocent, they can be used, we will discuss this later, for uh, combinations of these subunits, since one of the plans was to make supramolecules, and these can act as bridging ligands, and so they combine these tetranuclear subgroups to bigger assemblies. The same holds true for the second group of compounds that we have isolated with mercury when we used the nitrates of the lanthanides. Then nitrate ligands are additionally coordinated to the outer sphere mercury atoms and also they are able uh, to bridge. We have a whole series of such compounds. The same structure exists with samarium and erbium, not just with cerium. When we go back to the basic concepts, then we can consider it is important to understand not just the first three parameters, also the ge ge uh, coordination geometry of the metal ions is important. And here again I show these oxygen atoms at the mercury atoms will play a role uh, for the for the formation of supramolecules. <clears throat> what is about the bigger holes? I promised uh, with the big holes, with the very big hole, you can then make also complexes with big metal ions in the center, and finally we succeeded. And here, indeed, we did not reduce iron-3. This was surprising to us. Iron-3 was directed to the outer sphere coordination of this catechylator ligand. And in the center, a cesium ion could be uh, coordinated. When we make the same reaction with ammonium ions, then we get an in my opinion, interesting result. We get an interesting result in the way that we had then in the center of this big hole a bonded ammonium. Of course, this is not a coordination chemistry, but it's a hydrogen bonding chemistry. With this ammonium, uh, the hydrogen atoms of this ammonium ion have an extended next network of hydrogen bonds to the oxygen atoms of this catechylator ligand, and so they are tightly bonded in the center of this metal complex. This is a cation, can be crystallized as hexafluorophosphate, and I like this structure, and we go on with the studies of the chemistry of this compound, since here we have plenty of opportunities to measure interactions. We can go into NMR spectra, we can study with deuterated compounds the, the, the force constants of these hydrogen bonds. There's a lot to do for the future. This compound has been done by our new Vietnamese student, and he is very keen on the spectroscopic studies. Well, we could see that we could depending on or using some basic co concepts of inorganic chemistry, make a lot of binuclear, trinuclear, tetranuclear, and pentanuclear compounds, small oligonuclear building blocks. And in the title of my talk was contained, we want to use them as building blocks for supramolecules. So let's come back to Jean-Marie Lin and let us 
give some guidance, what shall we do? We need a kind of spatial organization. We need spatial organization by intramolecular forces, electrostatic and hydrogen bonding, or strong covalent bonding. And so we should now use the periphery of our building blocks to organize them in the crystal in a distinct way that they, are, that they deserve the title supramolecules or at least polymers that are present in the solid state and it's also welcome when they break down when we dissolve them in some solvents. <clears throat> For this we wanted to apply strong that means coordinate bonds, weak coordinate bonds, the coordination geometry of the metal ions, also this finally ends in strong coordinate bonds, and in some example we get this organization also by pi stacking. Let me start with an artificial example. You remember these initial compounds that I've described, trinuclear complexes with a central lanthanide and these acetato bridges. These acetato bridges are carboxylates and in principle we should apply this way of coordination uh, for polymerization in a way that we can give a linker when we use terephthalic acid uh, for the, such systems and avoid acetate, then we should come to systems that finally make polymers in the way that they have side by side a polymerization by an additional ligand, by a terephthalic acid, by a bis acid. And to uh, continue this game, you can also consider to go to tris acids, but we did not do that at least not up to now. Uh, such a compound we isolated in the combination of dysprosium and copper and now we have an addition to this metal-metal interactions, seven angstrom, you remember, a distance between two lanthanides in the crystal uh, of about 11 and a half angstrom. So we had the first polymeric compound that we could make by our own decision. This was a planned compound. This is not a randomly self-assembled compound. Similar observations we made, I already mentioned that, with the mercury compounds. The mercury compounds form these subunits I have described before, but then, then they have some ligands left in the periphery that enable them to make a helical structure. A helical structure using two out of the three outer sphere mercury atoms to bind them by the tetrahedral angle of the mercury atoms. And this finally ends in indefinite helical chains of this compound. Weak coordinate bonds is our second idea. And the plan was to play with the molecule, to play with the molecule in a sense that we change the periphery of our ligand. Here we had, in most cases, an ethyl group. When we change this ethyl group for a morpholine, for example, then we should have an additional donor atom at this place. And this donor atom might contribute to the connection of the trinuclear subunits to bigger aggregates in the solid state by additional coordination. So we prepared a series of these compounds and studied the products. And what we learned is, in principle, it works. And we are the master of the, of, of the system, since with small central ions, like calcium, like strontium, we did not get the interactions desired. <laughs>